Welcome back to the channel everyone. As many of my subscribers may already know, I've been looking for a Gravely 814 for years. I did finally pick one up. I've actually had this tractor for about two months. I got it at the same time and same place as the yellow 430 that had the bad transmission and the nice 8123 that I thought was original but ended up being repainted. Got them all from the same guy at the same time. The 430 and this were sitting out behind the house. I was confident that I'd be able to get them both running and usable. But after seeing the condition of the 430, I hope this wasn't parked for a similar reason. Like the 430, everything on this tractor is froze up. I got no throttle or choke control. I can move the things around, but the cables doesn't move. I got forward, kinda. Doesn't lock in, but I got it. Won't go into reverse. It did roll over here. This tire holds air for maybe five seconds, possibly 10, and I ain't even exaggerating. I can, once it gets up to where it's just barely squatting a little bit, if I hold the air chuck on it, with 100 pounds in the compressor, it just keeps coming out the sidewall of the tire. Both the backs are currently up. Had to fill this one up when I brought it over here, it was flat. That one uh, stayed up after I bought it. It is low, it's kind of flat, but uh, it's holding the tractor up yet. I believe the engine does turn. Yep, engine turns. Seems to have compression, so it's not blowed up. The other front wheel over here, well, it's MIA. Did get this wheel with it. I can put that on if I choose. Once I get this tractor running and driving and usable, I think the plan is going to be some three ribs or five ribs or something like that on the front, and obviously bars on the back so that I can use this tractor. Oh, huh, well, wise guy, huh? So, it appears, oh no, that the seat, oh, that's PTO, okay, is far enough up that it hits something before, well, help me understand. There it goes. Okay guys, remind me not to leave that PTO on. No air cleaner. I do have one right here. And I bought this before I even got the tractor, so I didn't even plan this. I don't even think that I checked to see if that was open when I got it. So I didn't know until right now that it didn't have an air cleaner. Got some sort of fuel shutoff thingy that actually works for some reason somehow. That's strange and weird. Check the oil and it's got something in it, but not much. At least it's got something in it. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, well, I ain't gonna be able to get that out very easily. Have to get a pipe wrench. I think that should have a dipstick on it for the rear end, but I'm not sure about that. Everything on this tractor looks okay, but uh, it definitely has some use on it. I can turn the engine over just by turning this. Not ideal exactly, but it, oh well, I guess. Hopefully the engine's not like shot or something. Doesn't have a ton of compression, so it wouldn't surprise me if this engine's worn out, but let's sure hope it isn't. Tractor does have hydraulic lift. You see the pump right down in there. Hydraulic lever right there. All in all, pretty nice tractor overall. It is an original tractor. One owner original. Here's the dealer sticker. It's in pretty nice shape. I'm glad I caught it. When I did, hopefully 
uh, didn't sit out too long. You can see no paint on the serial number tag. So pretty nice for an original. It does have a replacement seat, it appears. That seat will be going away. Uh, I have a not so correct seat that I would like to put on it for comfort. Uh, this is going to be my main use gravely, I believe. So I'm going to have to get a bunch of work done to this. I've never looked in the tank on this either. Oh, come on off of there, fella. But much to no one's surprise, it's not good. At least it's just stuff built up at this end right here. So we'll have to try and get that out of there somehow. That's nice and dirty. It's been sitting inside the entire time I've had it. But, uh, seat still leaking water. That seems fine. No idea if the mower decks froze up or not. Oh yeah. Oh well, maybe not. It kind of tries to turn. This one. So it might have a chance of not being froze up. We'll see. I think the first thing I'd like to do is get this hood off here. And maybe the platform also. Pop a battery in this sucker. And uh See if it cranks over. All right, guys, so I'm pretty surprised that they did not burn this tractor down. So uh, these tractors are a negative ground system. Negative, right here, right here, see, see. Positive, right here, ag with the bolt against the hydraulic reservoir, which will be grounded, so how they didn't burn this thing down is beyond me. Uh, that may have been why it was parked right there. I wouldn't think that they'd be that dumb, but it's hard to tell with some of these people, I guess. I suppose we'll pull this battery out and uh, put our own in and not do that. Okay, so I hate these kind of clamps. It makes it hard for me to switch batteries easily from tractor to tractor. So, I have these nice new clamps that I just got the other day. And I'm gonna do the right thing and uh, just kinda bolt these on here. The key switch has even froze it up. Kinda. Still not drawing no power. Well, I'd be willing to bet that key switch is probably not good. Where's this going to? I'm going to start probing for some power and see what I get. I'll bring you back, because I'm sure you don't want to watch me probe around all day. So I determined the key switch was the issue. I had this key switch laying around that I replaced because one of the accessory terminals was bad. But uh, the rest of the key switch seems to work. I only marked one terminal as being bad. So let's hook up the battery now with this in here. I did have to switch the power wire though. But let's hook up the battery now and see if this thing will turn over. We still don't have a draw. Hey, good grief, why don't you wanna? Oh, I'm upside down, that's why. Well, she cranks. I know this battery's not dead, or I'm pretty confident this battery's not dead, but uh, man, is that slow. 12.3 goes down to 11.3 when I crank it so that shouldn't be enough to 
slow down not much this thing might just need cranked a little more I mean the starter on the last one was not happy this one might not be thrilled either let's ignore that and continue to diagnose things hey look at that we've got power back here normal that we do but always nice to be able to just check okay I'm not too surprised but uh, yeah we don't seem to have power coming from the points meaning the points need cleaned which like I said I'm not surprised that's normal when they sit so I think the next step is going to be get the points clean Ouch. and then worry about fuel alright guys so like I said I need to clean the points so I knocked this wheel off because the points is in here and the wheel sits right here and uh, I found something out that I didn't want to know so this kind of worn out right oh no really really worn out right there's where it's supposed to be there's only enough meat left that if you push this up in against the bolts it'll catch it takes a long time to get it to wear out that much and as little compression as it seemed like this engine had I'd guess the engines probably worn out and uh, everything else probably pretty well whooped too so hopefully I'm wrong and at least the engine's good. If the engine's good, this project's still a go. If the engine is bad, then we're in trouble. So hopefully, at least the engine's good and tight. Maybe they rebuilt it. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. But uh, we'll see. This is a good sign. This engine equipped with 15 amp alternator. I like to see that. I hate the 10 amp ones. So, yeah. Hopefully this is not a sign as to how bad everything else is. I have seen them this bad before without everything being worn out. Hopefully this one is not worn out, just the hub is. So I'm going to pop this points cover off, clean the points, and we're going to see if we get spark. Points covers off. These points are bad. Hopefully they're even cleanable and usable again. I'm going to try and get this sandpaper in there and doll them up a little bit. Which is kind of difficult with one hand. See if that even started to do anything. Are they even closed? Now they're closed, okay. Now, let me try and get in there again. So I just went up and turned on the key. We're going to do what everybody else does. And... Okay, we've got spark now. Key's back off. So now, we need to worry about fuel. And... Uh, I usually go ahead and get ahead of myself and rebuild the carburetor and I just like to do it that way because then if I find out it is a runner by just spraying ether in it to start with this engine sat for 10 20 maybe longer years so I like to use 
the proper method just rebuild the carb that also makes sure the fuel pump is kind of lubricated as it's running if it starts I see that this popped loose I didn't do that so it might have had a running issue before they were getting ready to do something with it hard telling even if somehow I can get it to fire on something I have no throttle or choke control from up at the dash because these cables are both froze up I've started soaking them hopefully they'll come around like the 430s but I think what I'm gonna do is just jump right into taking the carb off and rebuilding it just like the other ones All right. This one's not going to come apart too hard yet. Really not too bad looking. It looks kind of clean in here. What I can see there anyway. Not too bad. <clears throat> there we go. Bowl's pretty clean. I might not have even had to rebuild this one. Oh, never mind. I don't know if you guys saw all that, but uh, shouldn't be in there. See if the float or the needle is stuck. Nope. Fell right out. Didn't even have to click, hang, tap, or anything. Petrified seal. I actually might be able to reuse that though. Ooh. Well, well, that shouldn't be in there. Some dirt. Looks like mud dabbers maybe got in there and started building a home. Would have been easy for them. This passage right here is where they'd have gone in to do that. And there's dirt right here too, so chances are good. That was their intention. I would just like to notice that the carb's painted on this. This is painted over. They didn't paint the coil on the other one. Hmm. But nothing on the tractor side is painted over. Which makes me wonder, just a little bit, if this engine's rebuilt also. I sure, sure hope it is. That would be amazing if they had this engine rebuilt because you see, that's painted over too. So this engine's been repainted. Head's got paint on it. That wouldn't have been that way. So I kind of think that they rebuilt the engines on these and painted over them. Because if you look at the tractor, tractor side, tag has no overspray. I already showed you the dealer sticker. It had no overspray. Decals, no overspray. Decal in there. Not painted over. No overspray here. Uh, no overspray on the steering shaft. Not that it'd be easy to tell with all the rust. That doesn't appear to be repainted. Platform looks original. No overspray anywhere around here. That's kind of. That's not been painted over. Makes you wonder if this engine is also rebuilt. I sure hope so, because I do want to use this tractor and keep it permanently. Alright, I'm back to trying to get this thing running. Gave it a couple hours to soak. Finally did get the throttle cable to move a little. It still won't push the throttle back down. So I'm going to try not to have to use any throttle. Hopefully... The pump down here will pick up fuel all right and we won't have any delivery issues I put new line on here and a filter in line also put a new line in front took the tank out cleaned it out and we got some pinholes 
So I went over and grabbed the tank out of the 812. And it's sitting here now. Got gas in it. I've got gas back to here. So we're going to hook the battery up and start cranking it over a little bit and see if we can get some fuel squirting out of here, which would be up to the carb. Not got much for oil in it. If uh, it starts, I'll have to shut it right off, change the oil in it. But yeah, I want to try and get some fuel up here first. Take this off and make sure that we're able to spray gas all over the muffler. Is everywhere yet? Yep. It's making a mess. Ouch. Gas and open wounds. Painful. Turns out. Also turns out that this line leaks, but uh, we are getting fuel up here now, so that's a plus. I'm going to have to clean up some of this mess, because if this backfires right here, we're going to have a problem. I'll probably just go ahead and replace this line also while I'm at it. Okay, cut me a new piece of hose. Okay, let's see if it starts pissing now. That's better. Seems that I do have gas up here. That means the carb ought to be getting some in it. Probably if I was smart, I would let some of this gas evaporate off here before I try to start this, because right here will be open flames. And right here will be hot muffler. So, let's let some of this evaporate, and then we'll try and fire this thing up. All right, I put the air cleaner on, because I figured we're probably going to have junk flying. I did put a new filter in it. Let's see if this thing will pop off and try to run. Let's try again. Contact.
I'm still sparkless. What the heck? All right, so I got spark back again, so let's try this once more. So I've done two things. Charged the battery up and I put a new key switch in it, brand new. So if that doesn't fix our issue, I don't know what will. So first things first, I'm gonna be confident. Still low on oil, still gonna ignore that. Turn on the gas. Let's try again, see if it'll fire now. Now it just gained spark and fired. We got intermittent spark for some reason. I have no idea why, but it's trying to fire. And so who am I to stop it? Spark again. Gosh darn stupid daggone thing. Help me understand. What's your issue? Grr. All right, I put points and condenser on it. I am going to have a heart attack if it does not have spark now. I'm going to get confident. I'm going to take the spark checker off. Contact. Okay guys, it's literally like five seconds later. I turned on the key, played with the points, now I got spark, so I'm going to try to start it again. Okay, now we got spark. starting. I don't remember where we were, 
Uh, it's been like an hour and a half, maybe two hours. The battery's charged up now. We're just going to see if it'll start. I just... I'm at a loss for brain cells currently. If it doesn't start, I don't know what to do. Except for continue to fight with it and hope for the best. And uh, contact. <laughs> Nope. Let me guess. We lost spark. No, we still have spark. What the heck? What in the hedge clippers heck is happening around here? Give her a little bit of firing throttle. Look here, fella. You're just gonna have to start. Stop whining. Okay, so Figure it out. So I've developed another problem. Uh, we have smoke coming out of there, so probably from the solenoid. So either the solenoid is cooked or has a bad connection, that's why we're not turning over good. Because I put the tractor battery, jumper cabled to the other tractor battery, to turn over this. And it's just, as you see, laughing at me. It is like 11 o'clock or something. I am going to uh, wrap this up for the night and come back at it tomorrow. So y'all just saw me test the voltage I'm getting to the starter. It is not full 12 volts or 11 volts under load, which is what this battery has. I'm only getting eight back there. So I think the solenoid is the issue. It's smoked the last several times I've tried to start it. So I went and robbed the new solenoid off of the 430 that I put on since it's got a bad trans. And uh, we're just going to stick that on here and hopefully we'll crank over quick enough to start.
now that we know the engine's decent, I'm going to change the oil in it, or at least add some before I keep running it much. Just changed the engine oil. Let's see if it'll start back up.
second now. Clutch was stuck, it wouldn't go into reverse before. Forward beats justice, reverse is alright though. this run a while all right this thing just died I checked I lost spark again again from the points side really have no idea what's going on down there but uh, honestly it's getting kind of old I'm gonna do some diagnostics and we're going to see if we can figure out what its issue is and get it fixed I kind of wondered if it was what I was doing uh, when it died, I was trying to put it in gear and get it to drive. I couldn't get it to spin the thing over here, and then it died. It was struggling some. But I'm going to figure it out, and uh, we'll get it fired back up. Stupid cover keeps rubbing. But I got it fired back up. Yes! Started trying to diagnose the no spark issue again, and it fixed itself. All right, I'm going to have to shut that off. I'm gonna have to fix this no or this rubbing issue now. You can see where it's doing it on the two sides that aren't bolted in. I'll find some proper screws and screw that thing on there better and then we'll fire it back up again. Alright, just fired it back up. I didn't take this cover off or put more screws in it because the two that were in it are froze up. I can't get them out. They're being soaked currently. And the other two that are missing are broke off in the flywheel so I'll have to try and get all that out I was going to just take this completely off but the bottom bolt is a screw and it is again froze into where it's at so I just took the top one out and pulled it out away far enough so we're not rubbing no more this thing's not burning any oil I brought it in gear. If I engage the clutch. I brought it in low gear, that's why it's going so slow. I'm gonna bump it up to high. Definitely not the healthiest sounding transmission in the world but it moves does its job when I brought this thing in here steering was froze up. I was able to get it broke free some yesterday. It's still stiff. It's still soaking it. Hydraulic lift still froze up. There's this. Now, right here, you can see how rusty it is. I still have not been able to get it to move at all. I've been soaking it and everything else. So, hopefully I can get it to break loose eventually, but if not, I guess I'll uh, use the one off the 812 parts tractor. I don't know why this thing keeps losing spark. Kind of ridiculous. I'm going to open the doors, get some fresh air, and then I think I'm going to try and pop the PTO on and see if the mower deck breaks loose. All right. So I'm going to try and engage PTO some. Uh oh.
just figured out why this tractor was parked. The PTO is bad in it. Great. They must have burned up the PTO. This thing runs pretty good. I want to drive this, or at least try, to see if it's even worth going any further, putting money into replacing the PTO and some of this other stuff. So I'm going to get this wheel thrown back on, get some junk moved out of the way, and we're going to try and take this for a spin. Well that was fairly uneventful, uh, this tire just skids and slides so I don't really have any steering and the forward clutch is so loose that I have to mess with it to get it to go forward in the lowest creeper gear. So we're going to have to tighten that up first. It's running good though. I'm thrilled that the engine runs as good as it does. It seems to drive okay. So, I think I'd like to try and figure out if the trans needs any more oil. Because I don't want to burn up the trans. I'm sure there's supposed to be a dipstick or something around here someplace. I pulled that pipe plug uh, cap fitting, whatever you guys want to call it. And there's no dipstick on it. Uh, that's got to be the fill. I don't see any other way to check the level, so I'm going to have to do some research. But, uh, yeah, this thing's running pretty good now, at least. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to cut the video short right here. I was just checking, and I've already got almost three hours worth of footage on this tractor. So, uh, you guys have seen it run, you've seen it drive back and forth, just, you know, that far. But it does drive. I need to decide how far I'm going to go with this. If I want to put more time and money and work into it. As you guys saw, the PTO does not work. When I engage it, it doesn't do much of anything at all. So I'm going to need new PTO clutch in this. Obviously some front tires and some other stuff. But it runs and drives. Engine seems to be good. Transmission seems to be good. So that's where we're going to cut this video off. If you are interested in seeing this project again, uh, just subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and keep your eyes out. I will be doing a lot more work to this tractor, but uh, that's going to be it for this particular video. So if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, subscribe if you have not already. 
and uh, drop any comments down below with questions or video requests or concerns or anything like that. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will catch you on the next one.